Hello guys and welcome to a little video about uh, L systems. L systems is um, short for uh, Linden Myers system um, and you can read it on it on Wikipedia. I just wanted to check out what it was about because I heard that term in some connection and uh, it appears that it's kind of interesting to play around with so I decided to spend an evening uh, fiddling with this. So you can see it can generate things like plant stuff and Sapinski triangle and stuff. Um, and really it's uh, quite interesting uh, to look into. There's a book um, you can download here which explains in far more detail what it's about. Uh, so I suggest you go check it out if you want to. But anyway, I decided to make a, a very uh, small implementation of this. So this is uh, actually a very simple L system. <clears throat> and the L systems work basically by having an axiom, uh, which is basically a string, starting string. And it then has, uh, I only uh, implemented two rules. Uh, so I have one rule saying that f should be replaced by f, 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 and it's then going to run a number of generations recursively and then it's going to run over this string again and say for each f it should be replace this with fff so this becomes uh, nine f's so if you make this uh, uh, in a different way you can um, add stuff like a minus and a plus which uh, would be interpreted as a rotation and in this case um, if I add, for example, uh, f and a plus here, maybe a little bit more, f plus plus, then you can see it's uh, doing this bend here. Um, so, and if you then add, for example, an f, it's going to continue straight forward, and then add a minus and an f more maybe, and you can see you're going to get something looking like this. And this is just with one um, generation. So it's going to run the initial and then it's going to run this one and then generate this. Um, so, and the last thing component I implemented for this one uh, is the, um, the branching. So the branching works by saying whenever we meet a square bracket, uh, we're going to create, save that point. And then we're going to uh, continue to do whatever whatever is afterwards so for this one I for example if we just say create a, a point uh, save a point then rotate and then move forward and then go back again so in that case it's just gonna not in this case not gonna create really a bend uh, or a, a branch but it's just gonna bend to one side but if I add one more and we can see that it's going to create a few branches here. So in this case, you can uh, this uh, way you can just experiment, uh, adding interesting stuff like this. Maybe see if whatever you can come up with. Maybe add some more um, generations, and really you can get a lot of fun stuff out of this just by experimenting with it. And I haven't really spent that much time, so I just wanted to show this because I think it's pretty interesting and quite fun to work with. So right now it's all working in 2D. So what I did was to add, oh yeah, and by the way, um, I added a little uh, angle here so I can decide uh, how much uh, my angle should change whenever I meet a plus or a minus. So I can tweak this for different effects like something like this maybe. And then every time uh, it, it branches, I can say I want to rotate, like, for example, 90 degrees. That's going to give me this one. Uh, so basically, you can play around with uh, different things. So if I return to the, the L system here, we can actually go to the bottom here and find uh, a rule set for this fractal plant, which says it has a variable x and a variable f and it uses these same constants 
plus minus and the two square brackets and then it has a rule here so if i copy this rule and just instead of x use uh, g as i used in in my setup here you can see this is what we have here and the starting uh, symbol is going to be the x in this case it's for my case it's going to be a g and then uh, if we return back in then the f rule is going to say turn this into two f's so if i uh, enter this and just type f then i should hopefully get something looking a little bit similar to that one um, and the angle is 25 degrees so 25 degrees and let me just for the sake of this make it a little bit more clear so this is what i get out of two iterations and this is um, the picture to compare this with so you can see the similarity hopefully uh, if i add a little more it, it becomes quickly quite uh, quickly um, very heavy because yeah it's spawning a lot of um, meshes so I also have a, a way of decreasing uh, each of these steps here so you can have a few more so maybe like that so that way you can see I can generate somewhat things somewhat similar to this one I think maybe yeah, this is taken at an angle, I believe, but anyway. Um, so still, it's uh, right now it's flat, and let me just lower this to 3, and set it up again to like 20. Uh, still need to sort out the, the spline meshes, I didn't spend too much time on this, and then add like... Um, this rotation at every point so that way I'm gonna get something looking like this now, is it, uh, as you can see it's a little bit heavier it's lagging on my machine which is otherwise quite capable I would say so you really have to be careful entering uh, not a too high number here um, I also added uh, a way to add some randomness here so you can on top of this, uh, for example, add a minus one and a one, just slight uh, small values here. Otherwise, it's gonna look way too much, uh, too random. Uh, and then every time I move it, it's gonna change the appearance uh, just a little bit. let's uh, add also the scale factor so if, for, since this is based on turtle uh, graphics just in 3d kind of it means that every time i move uh, the turtle upwards um, or i make a step that's why i have the these uh, randomness here random um, rotations i add um, but um, it also means that I can add a scale factor so that I can make this smaller. So for example, 0.9, uh, it's going to make make them progressively smaller at, a, at the ends. That's going to create this. So every time I move it, it, it changes a little bit. All right. And so far I haven't spend too much time on it but I also added a little uh, very 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 simple collision thingy uh, as you can see here it's kind of bugging out on me but if I move this over here for example <laughs> I don't know what's up with that okay need to pull it out of the ground a little bit so you can see when I move it towards this box it's going to try and avoid colliding with that box and and find a way around it but still keep uh, the general shape. Maybe it's a little bit more clear what is going on if I just turn this off, something like this. Yeah, 
and the collision logic is definitely something that uh, needs to be improved uh, i haven't spent too much time on this as i said it's just uh basically just trying to follow the the original direction uh so the, re the original direction was upwards so that could be changed to maybe follow the curvature of whatever it collides with instead um, but i haven't implemented that yet and uh, but yeah then it tries to uh, adjust according to that so I have, if i have something a little bit more complex like this um, Then you can actually get some pretty interesting, maybe three generations. Get some pretty crazy growth things out of this. And the cool thing about it is that it's all generated using all these small patterns. So you can, if you want to play around with this, you can just add one different symbol somewhere or maybe just change a little thing and then everything is going to change and it's pretty interesting to just um, play around with see what comes out of it and i guess uh, if i get the time i will also add some some leaves to this but yeah it's, it was just a test really um but yeah, in case you're interested in this kind of stuff, I uh, would highly suggest you go check out that stuff on the wiki I just uh, showed. It's quite a nice um, thing to look into, since I've been spending a lot of time recently on on rocks, which isn't really that uh, that much of a uh, that much related to Unreal Engine, really. All right, so um, in case people are interested in how I implemented the, the L system or any of the spline stuff, it's pretty basic, I would say. Um, just let me know. Uh, I'm happy to, to share that. But uh, just thought it would, was interesting to show. So, uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Oh, actually, one, one last thing. Um, in case uh, you're wondering what we can use this for. Um, if you go under developer tools and merge actors, then you can actually take this L system and create a, a one static mesh out of this. So that's pretty cool, I think. That's gonna create this one. It's, it's got a ton of triangles and vertices, as you can see. It's a pretty dense uh, cylinder I used for this, and it's, it has some weirdness with the some twisting and so on um, but as I said I didn't spend that much time on, on the spline stuff itself but it's um, it's pretty cool because that means that once you, you get a formation or a, a tree formation or whatever you want to do with this um, then you can just take this oh I see it generated a ball here I should take that out <laughs> that's actually hmm because that's actually the turtle itself. <laughs> I just cheated by using uh, a, a small sphere, which I walk around. Uh, it's actually inter quite interesting that uh, it included that one. Uh, let me just see if I can... Can you choose not to take that one? Ah, I guess you can. You just need to turn off the turtle. Off the turtle. So, yeah, anyway. So that's it for this video, I hope you like and bye bye.